Hi year 11. In this video, you're going to be looking at your second key case study for the ecosystems unit. Now, that key case study is deciduous woodlands. So you should already have a good knowledge of tropical rainforests. You need to contrast the tropical rainforest with another biome. And our biome, which you need to know in detail, is the deciduous woodland. In this video, we're going to look at the climate and then how that climate has influenced different plant and animal adaptations. If we start with the climate, here you can see data for London, England. Now, don't be confused by the fact that London is a city. If the city wasn't there, um, the area where London's located, it would be a deciduous woodland. In the table, you can see data for both temperature and precipitation. Now, these are average figures for each month of the year. First thing to notice, for temperature, there is a huge amount of variation in temperatures experienced throughout the year. In the winter, we tend to have very low temperatures. So we can see that for London, we've got uh, lows in January, February, December of around four or five degrees Celsius. Contrast that with the summer months. So if we look at June, July and August, things are noticeably warmer, 16 to 18 degrees. So in deciduous woodlands, between different seasons, we have huge variations in the temperature. For precipitation, there's not quite as much variation. It tends to be more consistent throughout the year, but you can still see some differences. So, for example, in uh, some of the early spring, we've got lower amounts of precipitation. So March and April, we've got around mid 30s in terms of millimetres, whereas in late autumn, early winter, so the months of October and November, we've got higher figures. But generally, we can see that there's, there's less variation when it comes to temperature. That has a big impact on the biome itself. Here we can see two different uh, diagrams. They represent the nutrient cycle for both the deciduous woodland and the tropical rainforest. A good idea, you might want to pause the video in just a second before I give the answer away. See if you can work out which nutrient cycle represents deciduous woodland. See if you can work out which one represents the tropical rainforest. And then you can also write down your reasons why. So how did you know that nutrient cycle represented the rainforest? How did you know the other one was deciduous woodland? So if you pause your video now, okay. Hopefully you would have noticed that on the left hand side of the screen, we've got deciduous woodland and on the right hand side of the screen, we've got the tropical rainforest. Now, these diagrams show the main stores of nutrients within the ecosystem. They are the circles. So, for example, we can see the S that represents the soil. Now, just to be clear, that's not the total amount of soil in the ecosystem. It's the amount of nutrients which are stored within the soils. The B represents the biomass, so that's all the living matter within the ecosystem, so it's all the plants uh, and animals. And then L, that is the litter. Now the litter stands for the amount of dead plant and animal material which falls to the forest floor. There's big differences straight away in the stores of nutrients. If we look at the soils, more nutrients are stored in deciduous woodland soils than tropical rainforest. There's lots of reasons for this, um, one being the fact that in the tropical rainforest, lots of those nutrients are washed down through the soils via a process known as leaching. That's because deciduous um, woodlands receive less rainfall than the tropical rainforest. We could also see that there's more uptake in the uh, tropical rainforest via biomass. There's more plant material there. Very quickly, as soon as nutrients enter the tropical rainforest soils, they are taken up by the plants which exist there. Another key difference is the biomass. So there is more plant and animal material in the tropical rainforest, and therefore they store more nutrients. That's because the tropical rainforest has the perfect growing conditions for plants. Hot and wet conditions all year round. We don't really have seasons in the tropical rainforest. In contrast, deciduous woodlands, they have a smaller biomass. That's because we've got the cold winter months when very little growth will take place. That also explains a key difference in the litter store. Now, we've got more nutrients being stored in deciduous woodlands litter. That's because every winter, 
many of the plants in deciduous woodlands will shed their leaves and those leaves will fall to the forest floor and be added to the litter layer. The arrows, they represent transfers of nutrients. And again, there's some big differences. So if we have a look in the top left, the P represents precipitation. Now precipitation will bring nutrients into the ecosystem. Precipitation tends to be less in deciduous woodlands, and we can see that from the smaller arrow. Because of that, there is less runoff in deciduous woodlands. Now runoff will be where um, some of the litter, but also some of the nutrients are washed away um, due to rainfall. Now obviously that's much higher in the tropical rainforest. This one isn't as clear on the diagram, but the arrow which goes between litter and soils, that represents decomposition. The breaking down of litter, so the dead plant and animal material, and then nutrients passing from the litter to the soils. Now decomposition tends to be faster in the tropical rainforest, and that's because it's got hot and wet conditions. Now they are the perfect conditions for decomposition to take place. In woodlands, in the winter, it's very cold, and so very little decomposition is taking place. Now, from that, you need to see that rainforests and woodlands are very different biomes. That's also reflected in the plants and animals which you find there. Now, your job is to make sure that you know some key plants and animals which you can find in deciduous woodlands, and you need to be able to explain for each one some of the adaptations they have to help them to survive in their environment. Now, here we can see an oak tree. Whenever you're asked about deciduous woodland adaptation, oak trees are one of the first species which I would be talking about. The first adaptation, you can see it within this picture, and it's the fact that the branches spread out horizontally. Because they do that, it means the leaves can capture as much sunlight as possible. And obviously that will help the tree with the process of photosynthesis. Another adaptation, the leaves themselves, they're broad, they're soft. It maximizes the amount of energy which they receive from the sun. And because of the fact they're soft, they don't need a waxy coating to protect them from excess water loss. We mentioned earlier that deciduous woodland trees, they will lose their leaves in the winter. The oak tree certainly does that. So in the autumn, the supply of water to the leaves is cut off. It's cut off by a seal that forms between the leaf and the twig, and it means the leaf will then die and fall off. It means the oak can survive through the short days and the weak sunlight of the cold winter. Now, the leaves, but also the acorns as well, they contain an acid called tannin. Tannin is um, poisonous for some animals, so horses, they can't eat it. Other animals, it tastes very bitter, so deer would be a good example. And it means the trees got protection against grazing. The trees themselves, they've got an enormous root system. It anchors the tree to the ground and it protects it against winter gales. But it also means those roots can access groundwater when conditions tend to be a little bit drier. Another plant species which you might want to talk about for deciduous woodlands, you can see in this picture on the forest floor. Here you can see bluebells. Now, Bluebells have got an adaptation which help them to survive. Generally deciduous woodlands, they tend to be quite shady, particularly in the summer months. There's a big canopy above them which blocks sunlight from reaching the forest floor. Bluebells have adapted to flower very early at the start of spring. It means they flower before the other trees are coming into leaf and it maximizes the amount of light, but it also maximizes their access to pollinating insects. In terms of animal adaptations, Here's a great example. This is a bird species known as the swallow. Generally, most of the animal adaptations which we'll talk about, they tend to help the animals survive through the winter months. We know that in the winter months, there's going to be very little plant growth. Temperatures are going to be very little, very cold. There's not going to be a huge amount of food around. So animal species have come up with adaptations to help them to survive. Now, the swallow will migrate. So they leave the UK in late September. They migrate to Central Africa when they'll find a greater food supply which is available to them. Here you can see another example of an animal adaptation. This is hibernation. Now, some animals in the winter, they'll enter a very deep sleep. Their metabolic rate will drop very low 
and they require a tiny amount of energy to keep them alive. Now that's going to be helpful when there's very little food available to them. Here you can see hedgehogs hibernating, but also you've got dormice, bats, adders, uh, frogs, toads, wasps, moths, and snails. So many animals in the deciduous woodland will use this adaptation. The final one we're going to mention is food storage. There's very little food available in deciduous woodlands throughout the winter, so some, some animals will store food to help them through those more barren winter months. Here you can see a squirrel, this is a red squirrel. Red squirrels will uh, create piles of nuts on the forest floor. Gray squirrels, they'll bury their nuts to hide them. Okay, so through this video, we've looked at the climate of deciduous woodlands. We've looked at the impact that has on the nutrient cycle and then different plant and animal adaptations. Good bit of advice, particularly for the an animal and plant adaptations. Generally, that will come up as an explain question. So practice writing down the name of the species, then what is the adaptation, and then the explanation, why is that adaptation important in the deciduous woodlands? How does it help that species to survive?